We've been talking about the elephant in the room. We've been talking about the idea that a lot of us, we know a lot about God, but for many of us, we don't know him. We're not in the saving relationship with him, and it's gotten very awkward. We talk about him, but we don't really know him. And so we went through study. We talked about simplicity. We talked about solitude. We talked a lot about submission. We talked about all these concepts of getting to know him. And today I'm going to share one with you that I just get super excited about. Did you know God is looking for a people who get it? Did you know that? He's looking for a community of people who get it. And what I mean by it is the kingdom of heaven. He's looking for a group of people who understand what it is to love each other, to show compassion. He's looking for a group of people that embody love. And here's what my wife and I are beginning to notice about this community. I think we're on our way. What do you think? For the Hebrew people, there was no I. You know how some people talk? They'll say, well, it's my problem. Don't worry about it. Have you ever heard people talk like this? It's my problem. Don't worry about it. It doesn't affect you. It's my issue. For the Hebrews, that's not how they thought. Everything was focused around community. If it affects you, then it affects me. If you're not at your very best, then we, the collective we, are not at our best. And so the Hebrews, they understood that it's very important to be a part of a community. There's a phrase I want to show you, actually two of them. And the phrase here, if we could go to that slide, uh, Am Yisrael versus Dat Yisrael. The one, Am Yisrael, is this, and this is what they use to refer to themselves, the family of Israel. Dat Yisrael means this, the nation of Israel. The Israelites chose to use Am Yisrael, which again meant community, family. They were very focused on family. Everything revolved around family. They were not like the other nations. Someone's going to need that. They weren't like the other nations where they were all about being an empire and oppressing others and all those kind of things. They were a nation that understood it's important that we love one another and we treat each other like family. How many of you would love to go to church and just go walk inside and say, this is my family? Isn't that a nice feeling? You walk into a place, it's like that, that show Cheers, right? Without all the alcohol. You walk in and you know you're loved. Everyone knows your name, right? You walk in and they know your burdens and your problems and they still love you. Can you imagine that? They still accept you. They still love you. Jesus understood this concept. Let me show you some verses. In John 17, 21, Father, as you and I are one, may they also be one so that the world may believe that you've sent me. When God's people get it, when they begin to love one another, show compassion to one another, grow together, the world sees this. You know this? I'm going to tell you this. The world is not that impressed with our 28 fundamental beliefs. Did you know that? They'll look at it and they'll say, well, that's interesting. You know what's going to impress the world? It's what Jesus says here. When they become one, when you walk into a community of people and they are one, they're a family and they treat each other well, people will walk through our doors and say this, I can deny a lot of things, but I cannot deny the experience I just had here. That was love. Do you want that when people walk through our doors? I want that more than anything. Go to the next verse. For where two or more are gathered in my name, <clears throat> there I am with them. I want you to think about that. Jesus is going to be here on 124.15, right? I told you that. He's here right now. Where two or more are gathered. You're like, oh, that was tricky, Pastor. I gotcha. Where more, where two or three or more are gathered, in his name, people who love each other and show compassion, Jesus is there. His spirit is here, and it's seen in all of us. I want to be that kind of people so badly. The Hebrews, life centered around community. Did you know that the temple, the synagogue, was like the central place for them to go? 
people actually wanted to go to church more than just once a week? Some of you are like, why would you do that? I'm exhausted after church. They went once or twice a day because they couldn't get enough of it. Some of us were just like, oh, it's 9, 9.30. Do I really want to wake up? For them, they were waking up at 5 in the morning, and they are like, oh, I wish we had a 5 o'clock program. I'm just so excited. Everything revolved around spirituality, about your community. And here's what they did. They worshiped. There was a teaching. Did you smell the food burning? <clears throat> and there was food. <laughs> there was always food. They understood this. In the Old Testament, you got all these festivals, and they said, we got to have worship, we got to have teachings, and we got to have food. New Testament, the agape feast, all these things, you, you see it over and over again. God's people like to party and eat and worship. Are you okay with that? I feel pretty good with it. I want to share with you one story to conclude. There was this study being done in the 70s and 80s. And what they would do is they wanted to find out, they wanted to find out about drug use and what it really does to an individual with addiction. And so they took a rat and they put the rat in a cage. And the rat, this poor rat, would just be by itself sitting there and they would take the water and they'd put, fill it up with some kind of drug, usually cocaine or heroin is what, what I was reading. And the rat would go up to the water, drink it, go back to the water until they went back so many times they actually overdosed and died. And so they compare that to addiction and what this does to a person. Now, Professor Bruce Alexander, he said, you know what, something's not quite right with this study. He said, there's something missing. So he started looking at the study a little deeper. And what he found was this. The rat was alone. <laughs> the rat's alone. He's alone in the struggle. So what they did, he said, we're going to create Rat Park. And they made Rat Park. And Rat Park, if you can show the picture, it was so much fun for the rats. They had these big balls and these cylinders for the rats to play and all this fun stuff. And they put the good water and the bad water. And what they noticed was this. All of the rats, they went and tried both. But what they started to notice was this. All of the rats started to shun the bad water. And they only started to drink the good stuff. The rats weren't that interested in that. What was the difference? Simple. They were part of a community. And what was even more interesting is not one single rat died at Rat Park. There you go, PETA. Not one single rat died at Rat Park. They all died in the other experiment when they were alone. And what this tells me is real simple. Next slide. It tells me that a lot of us, a lot of us, we go this direction. We feel like we're in our own little cage. We're by ourselves. We never experience community. We don't tell people about our journey. We don't share in it with other people. And we walk life alone. And we're stuck in our own little cage. And that's not how we were meant to live, is it? Some of us, though, we're beginning to get it. And we're walking the other direction. We're saying there is life in community. I don't have to be part of the cage by myself. I can live in Rat Park. I can experience heaven now with a bunch of broken, hurting people that are all beginning to be transformed through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? through the understanding of who God is and who he isn't. We can be transformed by this. And we can grow and we can struggle through life together. We can celebrate our victories and we can mourn over our defeats. We can be a community of people that get it.